Hello everyone, in this video, we are going to talk about how to use Power BI to access Amazon Athena database to get data. Today's problem statement is, I have a set of tables and views in Athena database. How can I use Power BI to get those data? So in this video, we'll have two parts. The first part is for AWS admin to grant the access to your end users. And the second part of the video is for the Power BI developers or the business analysts to use the ODBC connector to access Athena. So you can tell today's video, we have two segregate skill sets. So I will put in the bookmark in the, in the timeline. Feel free to use those features to jump to the parts that you need. Let's get started. In the second part of the video, I am a Power BI developer. And my problem statement is, I got the access key pair from my AWS Athena admin. Now, how can I use it to access my Athena table and views to make my report? There are a couple of things that you need to consider before we jump into the demo. So the very first thing is, when you're getting the information from your AWS admin, please also remember to ask for the region, output bucket location, the Athena database name, and the Athena workspace name. And alternatively, you can also add the table names if you don't know the table names. So there are five pieces that you want to get from the admin if you don't have the information. So the second thing is you cannot write a custom query. So instead, if you want to create your custom view or custom query, you have to do it from the Athena and the console side. So please contact your AWS admin to help you or just get into the console to add it if you have the access. And the third thing is Athena query engine is a serverless. And because of this, you cannot increase or decrease the performance and the download speed. So it is what it is. So you can try this to load your data once so you can get an impression on how fast it is downloading your data. So you can plan your schedule refresh accordingly. All right, let's get the Power BI part demo started. I'm a Power BI developer and I received the access key and secret key from my AWS, AWS admin. And here is the access key and secret key. And also I received some region and the output bucket name that I'm going to paste in my connector later. So the first thing we're going to do is to download and install the Athena ODBC driver. I open my favorite browsers and then I type in AWS Athena ODBC, typing enter. And usually this should be the first or second result that you will see. I'm going to collect, click this connecting to Amazon Athena with ODBC link. And you can see here I entered the AWS official site and you will see there are some download links. And I scroll down and I select the platform that I'm in. In this case, I am Windows. So I click the Windows 64 and I start the free download right away. After it is finished, we're going to click and install. The setup process is fairly easy. So we're just going to hit next. And after carefully reviewing the agreement, we click accept and next. We're now selecting the folder we're going to install. I will use the default and I click install button. And it is finished. The second thing, we are going to configure this ODBC connector. I'm going to click the Windows key button and I will type in ODBC. And you will see here, there's one thing called ODBC data sources 64-bit. Because we are using 64-bit, I'm going to click this instead of 32-bit. In the user DNS and system DNS, I'm going to put in the system DNS here, and you can see there's one demo already installed for you. I'm going to click this Add button. And in this Add button, you will find one thing that you just installed called Simba Athena ODBC driver. It looks like this, and I will click Finish. Here, there's some information that we need to put in. So the first two things are nicknames and descriptions that I'm going to put. So in this case, I'm going to put cloud trail data. This will be my nickname. And description is, you can put in anything. I will say created 
by Matthew. Aetherized region, this is the first information that we got from our developer, and I'm going to type copy this information and type in paste this US East 1 as my region. And the catalog here is actually where because we're using default, it is will be the AWS data catalog. You don't need to change anything. The schema will be the database name that you put in into the information. So in this case, we are using default. And also the works group name, we're also using primary. So this is also using the default value should be OK. The next thing is S3 output location. I'm going to copy this from the information that I received. Copy, and I'm going to paste in here. So remember, this is the S3 co column slash slash. It's not in the ARN format. In the encryption options, in this case, I'm not going to put in anything. I'm just going to click no, not set, but usually it would re recommend you to put in the SSE S3. All right, so the next thing is I'm going to click this authentication options. In here, there are a couple of things that I can use. So in this case, because we got from the uh, we got the access key, I'm going to copy the access key here. This is the access key. I'm going to copy, and I will paste here. And the second thing is the secret key, which is the password. And the secret key is this string. I'm going to copy this, switch back, and paste in here. And I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to set, hit a test. And it says, hey, successful connect to the database. And that's it. So if you are failing, uh, you can go and double check if all the information that you put in under the region, catalog, schema, which is your database name, your work group, and also your S3 output location, are they setting up correct? If not, you can uh, check with your AWS admin to check those information. All right, we are going to click OK and click OK. Now let's go into Power BI. The last thing is we will test in the Power BI desktop. After we open the Power BI desktop, we hit the get the data. And in the data source, I'm going to find ODBC. And here it is. I click connect. And it has all the data source names that I have. So in this case, we just enter the cloud trail data. This is one that we're going to use. So I select here and select OK. Here, it will ask me the username and password. I open the file and I will copy the access key as my username. Paste and my secret key as my password. Connect. And from the navigator, it will show us all of the views and table we have the access. So I'm going to expand to AWS data catalog. And I'm going to expand to the schema or database, which is default. And here are all the views and tables. I'm going to select one of them, and I click load button. And it starts evaluating and loading the data. And you can tell it takes less than one second to finish this 1,000 records and all the data is already there, and you can use this to build reports. And this will conclude our demo. Let's get one last thing, which is the gateway setup. I have my documentation and my gateway open side by side. So the gateway setup is fairly easy. First, it will be the same process as we just did. You are going to install the ODBC connector on the gateway and also configure that ODBC. And when you are configuring, please remember the data source name that we put in here. This is the value that we put in, and we can now change that later. So in the gateway, I'm going to open the page on the right. We are going to set up by selecting the ODBC. The connection string will be DSN data source name equals two. It will be the same 
that we put in the data source name. An authentication method is the basic. The username and the password will be your access key and secret key accordingly. And then you can click add and it should be working. So one last thing I want to mention is an advanced authentication method. In the configuration and in the authentication options, there is one authentication method called instance profile. And there are also some other advanced ones such as ADFS and IAM profile. So with this, you have to work with your Active Directory department or your ADAPS admin to set this up. It is better, the reason is you don't even need to put in the username and password as a string. And because of this, your data is actually secure. In this video, I'm not going to further discuss into this, but you need to know this option is here when you need it to increase your data security. And that's it. And that's it for today's video. As you can see, we use S3 to show the feasibility of this method. In your actual data pipeline, you might be using more advanced connectors, which will require you to change the policy accordingly. And if you get stuck at anywhere, please feel free to contact AWS support and Power BI support. They are always there to help you. And I hope you liked this video. Please let me know if, if you have any comments or feedback. And have a nice day.